Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. We're also going to check our work with Wolfram Alpha. We have 1 plus square root of 3i all to the power z equals 1 minus the square root of 3i. So we kind of have like an interesting complex number z that turns this number at the base to its conjugate. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can find that mysterious number. I'm going to start by turning both of these numbers into polar form. Let's start with 1 plus root 3i. If you consider 1 plus root 3i on the argon plane, you're going to realize a couple things. Think about graphing this, right, or plotting it. You can also look at the tangent. Tangent is b over a, if your number is a plus b i, remember? If z is equal to a plus b i, and theta is defined as the argument of z, then tangent theta is given by b over a. Great. So in this case, tangent theta would be root 3, which is positive. But you also have to look at the cosine and sine values, or a and b values. In this case, a and b are both positive, therefore you're in the first quadrant. So argument, or theta, would be pi over 3, or 60 degrees. Make sense? And the modulus, obviously, for this number is 2, if you take the absolute value. So we can write 1 plus root 3i as 2 times e to the power i times pi over 3. And of course, its conjugate is just going to have the reflection, right, over the x-axis or the real axis. It's going to be the same thing, except you're going to have a minus sign in front of the argument, which we can put in front of i. Make sense? So those are our numbers in polar form. And now we're going to talk about the complex exponentiation. What happens if you take a complex number and raise it to another complex power? Obviously, with the case of integer powers, we can easily define it. Like, let's say you were trying to square this number, then it will be easily defined, right? I mean, you just write the same thing twice and multiply multiply together, and you're going to get the answer, right? Or you can just use an identity, 1 squared minus uh, root 3i squared, or plus, I should rather say, minus 3 plus 2 root 3i, and that will be negative 2 plus 2 root 3i. But this is just integer powers. Rational powers are a little different because then you're kind of getting into the roots, so on and so forth. But with a complex power, how do you complex exponentiate, right? So we have a definition for that. Whenever you have something like z to the power w, you can write it as e to the power w ln z, right? So in this case, we have 1 plus root 3i to the power z, and it's actually more like I would say w to the power z because z is in the exponent, but no big deal. You can apply it to any situation. So we can kind of write it as e to the power z ln w, right? So w becomes the base in this case. So this is our w. So we can write this as e to the power z multiplied by ln 1 plus root 3i. But we also have to talk about the logarithm of a complex number. How do you log a complex number, right? And the definition for that is as follows. If you have ln of a complex number z, let's just say, it, let's just call it z, or I guess in this case, it will be more appropriate to do a w, right? Again, I go, I go back to z, should probably switch this around. Uh, you can basically define it as ln of the absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. So it's important to focus on the argument, which in this case is pi over 3, right? And of course, that's just the principal argument, by the way. And you can add multiples of 2 pi to it, so on and so forth. But let's just focus on the principal for now. I'm going to keep th things simple, and then you can definitely expand it. So from here, by this definition, ln 1 plus root 3i would be ln of 2, because that's the absolute value, plus i times pi over 3. Again, you can add uh, multiples of 2 pi, like 2 pi n to this if you want, but I'm going to skip that part, okay? Just mentioned it. Now, we can go ahead and plug this in, right? We have now e to the power z times that, so e to the power z times ln 2 plus i times pi over 3. This is basically the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, which is 2 times e to the power negative i times pi over 3. So we kind of have exponentials on both sides. Nice. We can go ahead and 
natural log both sides to bring all the powers down and this is what we get as a result z times ln 2 plus i times pi over 3 and when you ln the right hand side this is going to be a real ln right that's going to be the ln of 2 plus negative i times pi over 3 so we can put a minus sign here it's basically the same idea we we'll basically find the logarithm of the other number. Make sense? Okay. So it's, you could just ln both sides and then look at the ratio of two lns. That's basically what we're going to be looking at. Now, from here, z becomes ln 2 minus i times pi over 3 divided by ln 2 plus i times pi over 3. If they were both positive or negative, or I mean the plus minus signs, if they were the same, we would get 1. And what is that supposed to mean? We are talking about 1 plus root 3i turning into 1 minus root 3i. So it has 1 in it, but 1 is not the whole thing. It's not the, that's not the whole story. Okay? So you can definitely at this point go ahead and multiply by the conjugate, so on and so forth, but I would consider that optional. I will do something else instead. Let's multiply the top and the bottom by 3 because, I mean, I'm not really against them, but uh, who likes fractions, right? I mean, it's better if you don't have fractions. 3 ln 2 minus i pi divided by 3 ln 2 plus i pi. And of course, uh, after uh, this step, you can still do the conjugacy, the conjugate thing, whatever, and you can get the answer. But this would be the answer because you can definitely write this in standard form. But I did the checking for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha now, because do you think this is really going to satisfy the equation? In other words, can we just substitute this number for z here? And is that going to give us 1 minus root 3i? If we did it correctly, the answer should work. Let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha to verify our answer. All right? So here's what we're looking at. We have the 1 plus root 3i, which is our base. And then the exponent is 3 ln 2 minus i pi. Remember, we kind of multiply by 3 to get rid of the fractions. And the result should be 1 minus root 3i. Is it actually that? Let's go ahead and check it out. And ta-da! The decimal approximation. If you look at it, of course, uh, it is an approximation. But if you really focus on the imaginary part, 1.73205, so on and so forth, it is actually square root of 3, and you can kind of approximate it and write it in an alternate way. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to keep up the good work and keep watching the videos. And until next time, bye-bye.